Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. This video is to kind of walk through some of the key um, activations and transits of planets to the cosmic points in the astrological calendar this year in 2024. And um, because, you know, we know that we are in a time of great change and great shift. And it's just really interesting when we start to look through galactic astrology at some of the cosmic points and how they are being activated, how they are going to play a role in our ascension and in the raising of consciousness. So before I start, um, when um, we're working with galactic astrology, there are four cosmic points that we look at. They are the galactic centre, which tends to be the more well-known of the four. This lies at 27 degrees of Sagittarius, and it is the centre of our universe um, in that it is sort of throwing out really high levels of consciousness, of wisdom, of light frequency. It acts as a homing signal, so it is pulling or it's calling us back to source energy but it was also equally at the same time transmitting information so that those who are sort of um awake and aware enough can actually connect to that information so it is a source of guidance it's a source of inspiration it's a source of higher consciousness and also um, very much sort of taking us into the future with the Sagittarius link. Um, there's also sort of themes of freedom, of being able to see the bigger picture, of having a much sort of higher view. And when it's um, galactic, it takes us sort of beyond the realm of the 3D and Earth and our world and it actually takes us out into the cosmos and into the universe and starts to give us a much bigger galactic view of where we are within this huge and um, bigger picture within this playing field. Now the next point which is more potent and more powerful than the galactic centre and is sometimes described as the mother. This is the super galactic centre which lies at two degrees of Libra. Now this point acts as a black hole in that it is pulling everything towards it and also pushing out new information, new energy, new frequency. So the super galactic centre, because it is in Libra, is very much encouraging us to learn and grow and experience through things that are outside of ourselves. So that may be through relationships, through experiences that are not um, in the I am presence, but it also acts as like a cosmic vacuum cleaner and that it is pulling everything that is no longer in residence, no longer fit for purpose, no longer serving our greatest good. It pulls it all away and transmutes it. So there is very much um, a sort of destroyer creator energy to this point. It absorbs all that is. And when this point is active in a chart or through a transit from another planet or angle, there is an insatiable need to know more, to experience more, to be more. It's sort of pulling on our consciousness and um, pushing us into the void, sort of taking us beyond on a quest to experience, to expand, to grow in our consciousness out into the cosmos, into the universe. So there is an innate understanding when this point is active, either in a chart or through a transit, that you know we cannot have attachment to anything because everything is subject to change. You know, everything will either die or be transformed. This is very Phoenix energy as well. And um, so you know, it can feel very, um, it is very healing because obviously it is working for our greatest good. It wants us to expand, it understands and it brings the understanding that we have to let go of everything ultimately because everything will change. Um, but it is very alchemical as well because it is all about transformation and transmutation. Now, when we move to the next level, we have the Great Attractor, which is at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this has been described as the grandmother of all points. And just to say, actually, at this point, that a great um, source of information for the cosmic points is actually Philip Sedgwick. I will share his website in the description box below. And um, his website is very useful if you want to know 
know more. And there is also a book called The Black Hole Book by Alex Miller, which is also very helpful in understanding how these black holes, because there are many of them, how they affect us when they are um, active in a chart. But the great attractor, again, is black hole energy. It is pulling everything towards it. It is like a huge magnetic force, sort of beyond anything that we could really imagine. It is, as well as pulling everything towards it, it is sending out sort of very high frequency information very multi-dimensional consciousness. This is all about awareness. It is about knowing through the Sagittarian frequencies and signature, but knowing and an awareness at a much bigger sort of um, stage or level than, you know, we would necessarily be used to as humans at our 3D level. So it pulls everything back to source, to divine consciousness and it sends out really highly elevated streams of light co codes of information of wisdom so that anybody that is sort of awake and aware enough can actually tune into that and receive that information. There is, as I said, very magnetic energy here. It is pulling everything towards it, but it is also pushing for extreme evolution. It is stretching our mind through the Sagittarius, sort of wanting us to understand more, wanting us to see the bigger picture, to grow further than we sort of think or believe is even possible. But it, there's also a real frequency of truth here. So it is very hard when this point is active not to see the truth and nothing but the truth, to see behind the veil. It is, you know, very enigmatic, but it is ultimately sort of pulling us back to the core of who we are and where our place is within our own existence. The final point that we are aware of that we look for in galactic astrology is the Shapley or Shapley Attractor. Now again this is even more powerful, it's even bigger, it's the biggest point that we are currently aware of. So we could describe this as source energy and um, but it is creatrix, it is the void and this is um, really the way how it represents, how it shows up in the chart is its truth. It is the frequency of truth. And whenever this, this point is activated, there is no place for anything that is not of truth, that is not of pure and highest integrity. So if there are masks, if there are lies, if there is an illusion or anything fake, then that is literally sucked away, drawn away. It's transmuted because it cannot stand, it cannot exist when the frequency of the Shapley attractor is active. So everything that is not from a place of pure integrity will be exposed. So it's like shining a light in the darkness. Now this point is at two degrees of Scorpio, which obviously is a very healing um, energy signature. It is also about transmuting, transforming, eliminating, letting go, shedding layers. So again, this sort of that, those themes come through with the Shapley attractor. But you know, it is a huge gravitational force. It is pulling away anything that is not um, truth. So, you know, when this point is active, we are able to see what is hidden. We are able to sort of um, everything rises to the top to be seen, to be acknowledged and to be cleared. So, again, you know, very sort of plutonic in style, because that is what Pluto is doing as well, transforming, exposing. But, you know, a very, very powerful point. Now, these points do not move. They are fixed or they do move marginally, but not enough to um, sort of have transits of their own. So what we're looking at is when planets are and angles are activating them in the transit chart. And obviously, you know, the personal planets, Sun, Moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury are all moving at a fairly rapid pace through the astrological year. So what I'm going to look at is the outer planets, because that um, when they activate these points, there is more influence, there is more impact, there is more oomph. So that is what I'm looking at in this video. But that's not to say that the personal planets are not going to be significant and influential as they move around the chart and come into contact with these points. 
and what we're looking at, the most um, potent and the most the strongest um, aspects are conjunctions when the planet actually comes to the same point. But we also look at oppositions, we look at trines and I look at squares. Um, I'm going to leave it at, the, at that level for the purpose of this video or we could be here all day. Um, so what I'm going to start with is the um, galactic centre. And Neptune is in a square to the galactic centre for most of, or if not all, of 2024. And um, Neptune is currently at 27 degrees of Pisces. It will move to 29 by the end of the year, and then it will go back again to, it will pass 27 degrees twice more before it moves into Aries next year. So this square is um, quite challenging, but squares are very much catalysts. They There is um, a push for growth, for expansion, for evolution when there is a square through some challenge. Um, squares are not easy necessarily to navigate, but they are non-negotiable. You cannot ignore a square when we have one in the chart. And Neptune obviously represents our dream state, our spiritual self, also our spiritual awareness, our belief systems and our subconscious and, you know, what we believe. So when Neptune is in a square to the galactic centre as it is now, we are going to be presented with opportunities to question what our truth is, what our reality is. And because this is happening in Pisces and the galactic centre is in Sagittarius, these are both mutable signs. This is a mutable square. You know, it is quite difficult to really know what the truth is because everything is shifting and moving. You know, it is hard to find solid, steady ground with these two energies. And the galactic centre wants us to expand, to go further, to move out into the cosmos, to entertain new ideas and um, new beliefs, to push to expand, to stretch our um, understanding and our belief systems. And it's going to challenge our understanding of who we are and what we think we are of our place in the world. Um, so, you know, this is really going to rock the boat in terms of what we believe our, our sort of human earth history to be. It's going to bring in new elements of galactic history to be considered, you know, and this isn't just for people like us who have a vested interest on, or a deep interest in this field. You know, this is taking it out into the mainstream potentially. So we are going to find that our um, belief systems are changing very rapidly over the course of this year. We are going to be um, feeling much more spiritual, you know, and humanity is going to be much more spiritual and stepping into um, sort of much more unity consciousness through the square, along with other aspects that are also sort of affecting and influencing us in astrology and beyond. So I'm going to move on to the super galactic centre, which, as I said, is sort of the next um, level up in terms of consciousness, in terms of frequency, in terms of potency. Because it is in Libra, there is also this sort of um, focus on the other, Libra being about relationships, about being contra contracts, agreements with other people, with other situations, with experiences outside of ourselves. So a sort of an understanding that you know, we are here to grow and we are here to experience soul growth, but a lot of that growth comes through other people, through our interactions with other people. And there is often um, sort of a real draw to experience re relationships with other people that are going to help us to grow. But there's also an innate understanding with this point in a chart that you cannot be attached to anything because everything is ultimately going to change and nothing is fixed. So everything will either die or transform. And that um, sort of comes with the supergalactic centre. Now, I didn't say at the beginning, I should have said that all these points sort of act as black holes. They are pulling um, energy towards them and sending out um, higher frequency codes and energy and consciousness. But they can also warp time. So they are shifting our understanding and challenging our understanding of how we have always presented or acted in, in our world, in our reality. So these points are changing our understanding of reality, um, which is really interesting because I know there's a lot of other things going on 
sort of like higher levels throughout this year. But it's just interesting to consider sort of the role that the cosmic points are playing within galactic astrology. Now, the super galactic center is going to be in a an ongoing trine with Pluto this year. Now, I did um, as part of a podcast with a group of other galactic astrologers at the end of last year, I did a presentation on a super galactic grand trine between Pluto, Sedna and the super galactic centre. And I will copy the link in the, in the description box below to that. So you can go and watch that if you want to know. I'm not going to talk about Sedna in this particular video, but this trine with Pluto, which is sort of moving between zero and two degrees of Aquarius for the majority of this year, is really um, sort of pushing us to question our reality, question our understanding, to seek and search out new information that is going to help us understand sort of our place within the bigger picture, within the galactic cosmic sort of landscape, rather than keeping us sort of locked into, you know, we are humans, this is Earth, this is all there is. Um, Pluto is about transformation, it's about growth, it is about our evolution. So this is a really supportive, beautiful, flowing energy between the two. But it is challenging and expanding our, our minds and our concepts of reality and sort of introducing new um, ideas for us to consider. It is, again, you know, we are going to want to know more with this aspect with this trine it's going to push us sort of beyond ourselves beyond our 3d world beyond our everyday reality sort of push us to know more to learn more um, and to get hold of more information so it's very very exciting but it's also about information being uncovered because Pluto is very much about sort of unveiling and revealing what has been hidden so if there has in, has been information that has been hidden from you know the general public the collective then this is likely to come to the surface to be seen to be exposed at this time this is also about destroying old versions, old mindsets, old understandings of what we thought we were. It's about reclaiming our power because Pluto is about um, power. But it's also stretching our understanding, taking us beyond. And we have to let go of old paradigms, old ideas, old belief systems when this is active. So you know, a really exciting time. There's going to be a lot of frequency and energy upgrades at this time. And I believe that this trine is really sort of contributing to that. Obviously, the solar flares, you know, the solar activity is having a massive impact and there's lots of other fixed star activations happening too. But this is going on in the background all year, sort of pushing for growth, pushing for expansion, pushing us to expand our consciousness, to know more, to want to know more, to want to be more. So very exciting energy going on there. And um, we also have the south node is going to conjunct or come into an alignment with um, the supergalactic centre on the 18th or around the 18th of December. So at the end, towards the end of the year, when it gets to the early degrees of Libra. Now, the 18th of December is a really interesting day. I will definitely be talking about that as we get closer to it because there are so many cosmic point activations that day. It's quite hard to actually believe it. Um, but just for the purpose of this video, the South Node is about what we are letting go of so that we can move forward. And in Libra, it is about old relationships that have run their course that are no longer um, serving our greatest and highest good. It is about where we have had unhealthy codependent relationships with people or situations, not necessarily one to one relationships. This can be, you know, with our sort of structures, our systems, our governments, all that sort of area as well, where we have had um, our energy drained that can also sort of be dealt with at this time and um you know it's very karmic but it is about releasing it is about letting go it is about completing things that are no longer serving our greatest good so the super galactic center when it comes into alignment with the um south node you know this is about information but it is also about 
sort of possibly if we have had past life relationships or contracts that are no longer sort of um, serving us, that are no longer required, then they can be released and completed at this time as well. And they can be transmuted because, of course, you know, as we move into a 5D frequency, we are not going to need past life contracts or karma anymore because that is not an alignment in alignment with the higher frequency of the 5D. So, you know, this is a really sort of potent time to be able to let go of that and for all that sort of completion um, and releasing work to be tied up, if you like. And we also have Jupiter will come into a trine with um, the super galactic center as it moves into Gemini and that is around early June. So again, trines are really beautiful, very supportive, flowing, very gentle, but yeah, re really lovely energy. And Jupiter expands. So, you know, this again is just expanding this um the sort of the need to know more and to be more. Jupiter is our belief systems as well. So again, you know, we're likely to have our belief system sort of um it's like an upgrade really that that kind of feels like because Jupiter's in Gemini so it's bringing through information that we need to be able to upgrade and to move into a high level of understanding. Very exciting time of the galactic center all year. Now the great attractor is the next level up, grandmother of the cosmic points. Very multidimensional, very cosmic. You know, when it's sort of active in a chart, it is like, you know, everything and everybody is pulled towards it. Within the astrological calendar for the year, we are going to have the North Node in a trine to the Great Attractor. North Node, when it gets to 14 degrees of Aries, will be trine. Um, and that is, again, you know, the North Node is sort of where we are going. It's pushing for evolution. It's pushing for growth, taking us out of our comfort zone. So again, you know, you can sort of feel into this, but it is about higher consciousness and pushing in an, an, under, an understanding that we need to learn more, to know more, to be more if we are to grow, to move forward. We're also going to have um, Saturn in a square to the Great Attractor. That will be in April, so not far away. And then again in October because of the retrograde motion of Saturn. And again, you know, this is um, Saturn is going to maybe challenge the understanding slightly because it is a square um, but it cannot be ignored. So, um, you know, the Saturn wants to sort of bring some boundaries and try and contain and maybe master the information. But there has to be an understanding as well that this information is bigger than all of us. So, um, you know, it's that that's potentially um, quite a tricky square, but it is also about growth and about um, mastering we will also have Jupiter in opposition to the, the Great Attractor, and that will be in July and December, again, because of the retrogrades. So again, with this opposition, Jupiter expands. You know, it's about belief systems, and the Great Attractor is really pulling um, our beliefs and our understanding, you know, and taking it sort of way beyond. So again, you know, some really strong activations there. The final point I wanted to talk about is the Shapley or Shapley Attractor, which is at two degrees of Shapley, of, sorry, Scorpio. And, you know, this is going to be in a square to Pluto for the whole of the year. Now, Pluto is about exposing what has been hidden, as is the Shapley Attractor. So although these two points are in a square, this doesn't feel like a challenging square to me. This is not, um, you know, they both have exactly the same aim and goal in mind. They want to expose everything. And because Pluto is an Aquarius, this is exposing everything for the greatest good of humanity. You know, so these are secrets about human existence, human history that are potentially going to be coming forward. Anything that has been buried, hidden away, either intentionally or not, is going to be coming up to be seen. And this is about growth. This is about deep healing through the Shapley and Scorpio energies, 
just sort of um, letting go of old ideas, again, because Pluto is in the air sign of Aquarius, but it is revealing what has been hidden and serving us all. So, you know, we are going to be able to see the truth. The masks will fall. And again, this is not, you know, it's not an overnight job. It's going to take certainly active for the entire year and even into early 2025 but it is there in the background sort of um encouraging this um this disclosure which i know a lot of us sort of have been waiting for for a long time so there is a lot going on but really it's very easy to see how we are being upgraded and how our understanding and our consciousness is being increased through the activation of these four cosmic points in the chart. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, there is quite a lot going on into 2025, but I don't want to go on for too long. You know, this is a long enough video. I like to try and keep things, you know, as on point as I can. If you are interested in galactic astrology, you can look up galacticastrochart.com, put in your birth details and pull up your own galactic um, birth chart to see which points are active in your chart. If you need help to um, sort of um, decipher them, to help you read them, I do offer readings. So please check out my website. I also have a monthly newsletter where I send out information about the sort of traditional astrology and the galactic fixed stars as well. Um, so if you're interested in this field and you're not on my mailing list, please feel free to sign up. You can obviously leave at any point. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here um, and for, um, yeah, just for sharing this passion that I have for this incredible incredible field, <laughs> incredible modality. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's so exciting. So I hope you find it useful and yeah, feel free to comment. It's always interesting to know what, um, you know, what people are thinking, your feedback, etc. And I look forward to sharing more with you soon.